Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In our previous lecture, we understood the vital parameters to be taken into consideration before data acquisition and scanning. Today, we will discuss about the software interface for scanning, image processing and data extraction. Mr. Pankaj Khanna would provide software demonstration for performing the scanning. But before we move on to the live demonstration, on scanning, we can briefly discuss the software in general and how the user interface looks like. So, welcome again to this lecture Pankaj. So, I think it will be useful um, if we can actually see how the software works for performing the scanning. Uh, but before we move on to the live demo for the uh, scanning performance, maybe we can just briefly discuss about uh, the software in general and how the user interface looks like. If you can just elaborate on some of the features while one need to look for during the scanning process, I think that will be useful for us to understand when we actually look at the uh, demonstration for the software. True. So uh, the basic GUI, which we are going to see in a few minutes, actually contains three different areas. The first one is uh, image blazer controls. So there you wanted to see which kind of laser I am going to use. And second one is the different features which are used for the controlling of the image. And towards the right hand side, we have a pane which is allowed or helpful in hardware controls. So the basic one is in the hardware control is first, as we said that we can look at auto PMT and other adjustments which is being done. For that we use preview scan. So preview scan and that there are different tabs which allows you to go for the true scan and the preview scan and based on the laser which particular scan you are using. So like for example if you start with the preview scan you decide on which best pixelation suits me, right. which different power of laser suits me. Once you are able to do these decisions being made you can go for your own data scan. People prefer that because there are sometimes a bleaching effect on the floor of flows. Mm -hmm. So they want to avoid the exposure for a longer time. So multiple scanning is uh, avoided. So once you see even a single wavelength scan, so if your application requires only one wavelength to be scanned, there you can select in the tab only a single wavelength scan right. and then so also a preview scan with the data scan followed by. You can also do an automation that once you do a preview scan, you see that it is all good, then immediately it can go for that. But very rarely people use that because you see once and then only you want to go ahead. So it's like any general scanning, even if you want to just scan a sheet, right? First of all, you'd like to preview it, that how you, you just want to get a glimpse of the process, like how the overall image looks like. And then, uh, since you know your experiment, you know your requirements, like what wavelength need to be used, what type of flow of four you have used, then one need to optimize and correct those things during the data scan, which is the actual scan sure. performed. And then after that, one need to review that whole thing and then how the slide looks like. True. Maybe we can talk a little bit on the software, which even I'm using uh, GenePix Pro software, and uh, how one can acquire image uh, if one has a system like 4000B. Right. So there is a button towards the side where you are having a control for the scanning time. So as it is a dual channel, that even the two lasers are present in that, it is allowed to select whether you want to use one and two. Okay. And then based on one or the user application, you select both the lasers and then at the level of light scan, you control for the PMT and the which form resolution you want to use for. So these are within the same software towards the right hand side, you see the pane where you have a hardware control button. There you can also look for all these different images, which is being now suiting for your own biological applications. I think it will be more clear when we are actually looking at the, your software interface. Sure. 
Okay, so when we are acquiring the image, uh, what the intensity uh, histograms tell us uh, while scanning uh, is in process and even after the scanning is uh, done, how one can really ensure that uh, the scan is good and what type of balance one need to make in that? Yes, so basically in the preview scan, when you are scanning your live data, you can just switch on to the histogram uh, graph. Right. There, what it gives is how much red and uh, green channels are contributing towards the intensities. So you really want that they are overlapping, so right. they are really balancing. There could be a small variability in the beginning, owing to the fact that they are just a background, and mm -hmm. then the spots coming in. So there, you want that they are really overlapping after a little bit of lag, that is few seconds of lag, that's right. it. So once you are able to do them, you can see and select whether, yes, this PMT is being good for me. So this is a way you check which PMT is more suitable. So you select a PMT, look at them, see the overlap, wherever there is the best overlap without saturation, you want to go over those settings. I guess now it's time that we should uh, really move on to the uh, your software interface uh, and just see like how really the scanning is performed by using uh, this software. Yes, let's switch on to the GUI. Okay. Okay, so, okay, so let's talk about uh, the software and how actually we can use uh, the software for image scanning uh, from the hardware so that uh, now we can see it live uh, that how one can actually control different buttons for uh, uh, acquisition of the good images. Let's go to the GUI of sure. Unix Pro. So what you see now is a GUI or graphical user interface of GenePix Pro software. Yeah. On top, it is in the form of different tab buttons, which allows you in a different work group. Say for example, image allows you in different ways and cronering of the image acquisition. And histogram looks at how that image has performed. So this is what we were speaking about in the earlier slide, where you can see a live kind of demo which is happening. And then lab book actually gives what all you have done in a different step wise. So what is being every movement of yours in this particular software is being logged in. And analysis can be done in the form of batch form, which allows multiple uh, slides so that you can do alignment and the analysis, which can be performed with the batch analysis. And once the analysis is over, results can be seen and scatter plot can be now plotted at the level of this graphical user interface. Once you're through, you can look at the reports as well. So let's look at the major function of imaging. So what and how one control for the best image acquisition. I think that's important. Let's look at some of the buttons and how one can control those sure. to acquire good image. Let's quickly go through like different kind of buttons here. So now the imaging can be done at a different wavelengths and the like preview can be done at 635 and 532. In a single laser base, the wavelength can be done at 635 or wavelength at 532. So even the ratio of the imaging, how the both has performed together can be looked at looking at a button of ratio of imaging. So this one allows you to see how the image is being done after the scan. You can look at one channel, preview channel, or different channels. Okay. And now let's look at different tools which are available to you while or after the scanning. So yeah. the major ones are here where you can move across the chips in the form of this hand tool. The plus indicates the zoom tool. And the other tools are actually, this is want to unzoom and you can also look at the whole image button. So once you have the image, these two becomes activated. So these two are actually for the blocks okay. and looking and the controlling the blocks and these ones are the features. So many a times what happens, usually you get the GAL file, which is actually the feature information file. Yes, actually you can just maybe elaborate on GAL file because that's one of the very commonly right. used term when people talk about micro Sure. Right? So GAL stands for gene array list. So actually it gives the X and Y coordinates where each array usually is being presented in the form of blocks, which blocks in turn are in the form of features. So these blocks and feature positions are being recorded in GAL file and then the information or annotation is given to each spot. So GAL, G-A-L, that is gene array list file, essentially contains the X, Y and the number of columns and so also the information of each spot, how they are being annotated and placed on the chip. So if by chance, if you don't know or you are prepared by yourself, these buttons here allow to make your own blocks 
and we create your own GL file with the help of the tool which is called as Gene Array List Generator. Okay. So now let's look at the control button which is towards your right side. So the first one is a preview scan and then you can also have a data scan. Okay. One stands for one wavelength. So it allows you to take image from only one wavelength. And then you also have a multiple scan. So you do a preview scan, then you do a scan with this uh, button. You also have other buttons which will light up as and when you acquire the image. And this is for the analysis. So the, once the analysis is being done, if you click this button, the analysis will be performed after the alignment. Mm -hmm. So this is actually open button. So this is like normally your file where you want to open or save your images right. and this one is actually a flagging as we discussed the different features can be flagged you can look at once the image is available to you you can look at good bad or absent and you can give them a different ratings here again is looking at different zoom buttons so which allows you that which you want to focus on feature names or the feature ids where you want to go for a particular one the major one here is particularly this which allows a different workflow controls yeah. right yeah. so this allows in the fob a different ways can be had now let's quickly go through a one particular scan which is a simultaneous uh, simultaneous scan so both lasers will be acquired at the same time okay. so if i press on a data scan button the image the after putting your uh, inverted slides in the hardware it is scanning so you just see on the top which is very less visible so let's try to zoom inside so if i just put this button and allow you to zoom you One can region, see yeah. particular how the scanning is happening so you are looking at different image type so if i click on only one wavelength this because it's live after the scanning you can see it is going for the ratio image scan so now quickly add a histogram you see it is start coming up because it is scanning is going on live so it start reducing the so basically as we discussed it should be overlapping right. so my settings are usually looking very nice in this particular one it's like it's like as the scanning is progressing one need to also keep looking simultaneously the histograms correct to determine like how site 3 and site Whether 5 are how well aligned correct so how well aligned with the help of auto pmt so site 3 site 5 you can adjust auto pmt you can adjust laser power right. so that you can see this one so if we see some variation then we need to come back here and adjust these parameters so that they are super aligned super yes okay. So in this fashion, the image acquisition is being happening. Right. And you also have, you, we give you a power that in between the slides, usually people keep barcodes. Right. And our system or GenePix Pro is compatible with reading the internal barcodes which is being done. Mm -hmm. So so that you can have multiple scans also being passable. So okay. nowadays, each slide is coming with multiple arrays because of the variable densities. People are Correct. focusing on the custom type. So this can also be done with the new software upgrade developments. Okay. So now, as the scanning is being performed, let's look like I'll save the image. Right. And once I save the image, I would like to see how the different processes is being done. Yep. So, say for example, I have saved this image in the form of, say, this is the east. So I just want to open an image, which I have just saved. So, so basically, as we discussed, each particular array can be divided into the blocks. So this particular array of East contains four blocks okay. and each block is having features. Right. So number of feature information is given in GAL. So basically terminology is array, block and features. So I need to align that GAL information of positions sure. on top of this. So I have to put a GAL file and do my further analysis. So what I'm going to do now is open a GAL or GAL file, which allows me for alignments. Right. So best feature of GenePix Flow is its capability of identifying feature by itself. It's literally clumsy. So let's just see how the zoom button looks like. And we need to fine tune that alignment for um, overall uh, proper image extraction. Correct. So only thing you have to do here is just take your block and allow it to move to the first alignment. And then 
what you can do is click the button over here which is for the align align can be done in different ways i recommend to use the first which finds all features all blocks and do automated fashion so if you click once you see software automatically finds all its features right. wherever by chance the features are absent or there are some physical deformity it say it is not present or it flag it as bad so one thing which is good here like it's automatically adjusting according to the spot size correct the overall width it is adjusting according like with that some spots are not so uniform right correct so it's making that correction here correct so as you see you can actually move it but it doesn't affect life as long as you have just kept once and the data is being stored but usually people ask me is it good idea if i by chance move to do once again so it's not a bad idea to because it takes few seconds to do it right so once you have done this particular alignment let's look these two slide which i said you can zoom out yeah. so you can see whole particular slide now is being scanned and aligned as well so it is a very quick process which software performs very easily for doing the job and once you have done this you can always hit a button of results now if i go to results actually this is empty yeah. so if i click on results the results are being calculated and there are some 40 different columns which will be output in a form which genpix pro understands different ways sure so just quickly looking at the major ones the major ones here are looking at this f means the intensity from different channels 635 or 532 right and this background calculation is being done accordingly in the same laser range so once you do a corrections what happens is you want to correct your intensity mean values with the values of the background okay so this is what is the most important which usually people use for the further calculation right. apart from a ratio of means or ratio of medians which can be calculated again and being presented to you in a different column formats so each column signifies different ones like for example sd standard deviation cv coefficient of variations and then different channels coming up so in this fashion the results will be outputted if you are image acquisition first controlling the part then allowing you to align and then do the analysis so this is a basic steps which anybody or everybody want to do in micro ray steps so once you see the images the the people end up in the form of results and you have different columns available to you right after that what is the uh, next thing to look for like how good the center plots are or so there are different ways people want to visualize how my column because number make very less sense so the best way to look is a scatter plot right. scatter plot allows you in a different ways what you are plotting at x and y axes and here if you see i am just plotting actually towards f635 median over the f635 median so you are comparing two different channels how they have behaved so essential rule is they should mostly the micro uh, assumes all the chip chips are having the spots and which are genes which are not varying too much so right. you expect most of them to stand nearby to the origin of the center yeah. so this is what you want to look how at close is their align how they are close they are align yeah so they should be not too far away from each other so that they are not near actually to each other right. because you expect there are few differences but not very very significant which can be seen at very large scales so i guess we talked so far about uh, how to use the hardware uh, to scan a slide and by using this software interface which is genpix pro here to acquire all the data now next challenge is how to really obtain some meaningful information from this whole data which we have already acquired true so uh, genpix pro as we discussed in acquisition software and uh, the molecular devices recommend acquid software for further data analysis which can be at the level of secondary or tertiary based on that so you do statistics as well as visualizations on a single or multiple data to handle with so but it was good to talk to you about uh, how one can use the dna microarrays or even protein microarrays different type of slides and use the hardware the scanner to scan these slides by using the software uh, which has various features and depending upon experiment one can actually uh, take a decision that what type of features one need to uh, use for that scanning uh, i think it will be very good if you can just share with us the video uh, which describes the overview of the whole process starting from the uh, sample preparation followed by uh, image acquisition as well as the image analysis so 
uh, if you can show us that video, that will be great. Sure. Thanks to Molecular Devices, they have provided me with this video, which actually takes you from the basic process of biology in very, very brief to uh, important software parts and so also the hardware design, which is being emphasized to the level of results. So let's watch that video. Molecular Devices introduces the world's simplest, most reliable automatic microarray slide scanner. Now you can walk away from scanning while the GenePix Autoloader 4200 AL automatically loads, scans, analyzes, and saves results for up to 36 slides. The autoloader accommodates microarrays on standard glass microscope slides labeled with up to four fluorescent dyes. These microarrays can contain just a few hundred spots or tens of thousands of spots representing an entire genome. As many as 36 slides can be loaded into the convenient slide carrier. As the carrier is inserted into the scanner, sensors detect the location of each slide indicated by a blue bar on the slide carrier map. On the Batch Scan tab in GenePix Pro, you have complete flexibility to define the most appropriate settings and analysis parameters for each slide or for groups of slides. You can also choose to automate scanning, analysis, and file saving steps. Enter an email address and GenePix Pro will notify you remotely when your batch is complete. Using the defined scanning parameters, the precision robot arm leaps into action and moves to the first slide. Our unique never let go grippers securely clamp the slide and carry it to the scanning area. A barcode reader records the barcode and then the slide is positioned for scanning. The GenePix Autoloader 4200 AL can be configured with up to four lasers. A neutral density filter wheel can be used to attenuate the laser power if necessary for especially bright samples. The laser excitation beam is delivered to the surface of the microarray slide. The beam scans rapidly across the short axis of the slide as the robot arm moves the slide more slowly down the long axis. Fluorescent signal emitted from the sample is collected by a photomultiplier tube. As the scan proceeds, sensors detect any non-uniformity in the slide surface and the robotic arm adjusts the slide position accordingly to ensure the array surface is always in perfect focus. Each channel is scanned sequentially and the developing images are displayed on the monitor. The multi-channel TIFF images are saved automatically according to file naming conventions specified by the user. After the slide has been scanned, the precision robot arm replaces it safely in the slide carrier before picking up the next slide. As each slide is scanned, a list of each saved image with its associated settings and analysis files accumulates in the Batch Analysis tab until the batch is complete. GenePix Pro automatically finds the spots and calculates up to 108 different measurements for each spot. The results are saved as a GenePix Results or GPR file. GPR files can be saved automatically to the Acuity database for statistical analysis, clustering, and other advanced investigations. Okay, it was a very useful discussion, Pankaj, with you for uh, uh, knowing more details about various type of uh, features one need to look for to obtain very good images because that is the most important part for doing the microarrays. Once you have acquired good images, then only one can do good data analysis from that. So thank you for coming here and uh, sharing your experience for uh, overall microarray scanning and uh, data acquisition. So thank you once again for coming here and discussing and sharing about your experience for GenePix Pro. Thank you. Thank you. In protein microarray experiment, intensity of a spot is representative of the interaction between the sample and analyte. To achieve this target, proficiency in image processing and data acquisition is required. 
as discussed. The artifacts due to the contaminants such as dust particle or even very high background issues make automation in image processing and data acquisition very challenging. Researchers have devised several segmentation algorithms to reduce the manual interventions. However, you have seen that a degree of manual flagging is necessary to mark the low quality spots. This data would now be pre-processed for background correction and normalization. You have also seen the demonstration of one such software, GenePix Pro microarray image analysis software for data acquisition. And you will further see how it will be used to analyze data in subsequent lecture. There are several commercial software like protoarray prospector software which are available along with their compatible scanning devices for image processing, data acquisition and pre-processing. In our next lecture, we will continue our discussion on microarray experiment workflow and how to analyze the microarray data obtained from the images generated from today's lecture. Thank you.